Welcome to In the Spotlight, a regular podcast from the Witham, Barnard Castle's Community Arts Centre. Hello once again, Stuart Laundie welcoming you along to In the Spotlight, the weekly podcast from the Witham Community Arts Centre here in Barnard Castle, County Durham. We're talking folk music this week, ahead of a gig in November by a trio of musicians who came together uh, during lockdown as part of a project called the Global Music Match. All will be explained in a couple of minutes' time when I speak to Lucy Ward, one of the trio involved. But first, here's a track from the album that they released earlier this month. Uh, This is called Paper Plane. Stood on your doorstep, half lighted sunrise, your door a shade of faded blue. The air was pregnant with words unspoken, growing contractions of coming conversation. was a lovely song called Paper Plane performed by Derbyshire's Lucy Ward, Svavar Knuta from Iceland and Canada's Aidan Towns. The trio got together, musically speaking, uh, during lockdown as part of a global project. They continued their collaboration once restrictions were lifted and an album resulted called Unanswered. They're now on tour and will perform at the Witham on Wednesday, November the 22nd. I caught up with Lucy a couple of days ago and basically asked her how the whole thing came about. So, Lucy, um, explain to me how the global music match works or worked. You know what? This is a really hard question to answer concisely. <laughs> I've been trying to get it right over the interviews and I just haven't managed yet. So let me give it a go. It was a bunch of international export agencies 
trying to find a way to connect musicians and audiences during those first lockdowns when, you know, none of us quite knew what was happening. And it was a very scary time and, uh, and not least for the music industry and well, for everybody, really. Um, and so the way it sort of worked in practice was we were thrown into groups with random other musicians um, and each group had six artists from all across the world. And we just had kind of six months to get to know each other, to share each other's music with our audiences. And in this group, um, among other artists was myself, Suave Arcanuto and Aidan Towns. And that was the beginning, the the, the seed that later grew the trio I see. And had you had, had you come across each other before or was this um was this kind of like blind dating in the music world? Oh yeah. Oh that's a really good way to describe it. That's what I should have said. Yeah, it was exactly like speed dating musicians <laughs> you'd never met before. <laughs> um, so it was so it was all new to you. Yeah, all new to me. Um I did have other people in the team like uh, Brayback from Scotland were in our team and you know because of the nature of the British folk scene, I, I knew them and their music fairly well. But for for Aiden and Suava, they were they were new to me, and I was new to them. But I think what um, drew us to each other really was as songwriters. I think we're all quite interested in the human condition, and although we have quite different uh soundscapes like I think Aiden has a bit of a pop sensibility really certainly like in comparison to my more folk style of writing and um and of course Suave are coming in with all these incredible Icelandic and Nordic influences it's I think it's made for an album that um that has that kind of songwriting that storytelling at its core but with all these really interesting and different soundscapes interweaving did it take long um before you realized that um, you'd kind of clicked? Um, no, I, I think we were really blessed in that everybody in that group, we also had um, Canzonier Greconico Salentino from Italy and there was Fanny Lumsden from Australia and Brayback, as I mentioned, and we all hit it off ever so well. And when the process finished, we weren't kind of ready to give up our weekly mm -hmm meetings our weekly self-help really <laughs> as it became <laughs> our weekly wow I am still a musician even though I can't do anything right now yeah. um and it, it was myself Aiden and Suava that kind of kept that up the longest really kept yeah. up the meetings and um but yeah big big love for all of them uh and it was after a few of the meetings where it was just us that we went like oh should we should we try and write something? And then it was another two years of writing <laughs> arduously, to be honest, over Zoom, because Zoom is like an awful thing to write across. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a long but uh, nice journey. <laughs> so when was the first time you actually met either of these two guys in the flesh? Oh, yes. Yeah, so that was April this year. So we got... Blimey. I know we got a bunch of songs together and then sort of realized that we had to um we had to take a leap really and the only way to do that was to get some money together and get ourselves to Iceland but we couldn't afford to do it twice we had toy toyed with the idea of shall we meet up do a bit of a writing sesh check we all like each other in the real world yeah. <laughs> and then and then do it again if it's good like come together to um to record the album but we didn't have the money to do that so we met in Iceland and we had two weeks to finish this record and record it on a mountainside in Akureyri <laughs> <laughs> and it must have gone all right then yeah yeah it was all right you know, <laughs> it was good it was interesting actually because I think I think um as a musician often you don't normally work with people you don't know or you haven't had some kind of like, oh, they decked in a band I once played in or like you haven't had some kind of personal contact with. So it certainly was challenging kind of dealing with the different um, demands, the different work styles, the different ways of recording things. Um, but as I say, we're all really proud of the album that, that came out of it. And I, I think... I think with all things pandemic and with all things in all walks of life, 
a lot of us have had to take those leaps, haven't we, to, to mm. find our way out again into creativity or whatever it is we're trying to reclaim. So I think we're all really um, pleased we did it. But yeah, it was um, it was big. <laughs> yeah. And how was it recording an album in just two weeks? It was definitely different for me because I like to like mash an album. I like it to brew. I like to do a session, come back a month later, go, oh, that's a load of rubbish. Let's do that again. Like that's how I like to work. So the relentless day after day, and I have a young family as well, and they were out there with me. Like I found it really challenging. Um, but it was also incredibly exciting to be creating on the hoof because, you know, with I mentioned about Zoom being hard to write over. The main reason being, if somebody sings you something you can't sing a harmony over it because zoom yeah. mutes their voice then or you can't play another instrument along so kind of like the 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 album was almost recorded sort of in conjunction with these songs coming alive for the first time um so it was really exciting in that sense They're calling again from 1963 I never answer but I think I know what it means The phone's disconnected but still it rings If I ever pick up will I hear anything What say you? Who's this that calls for me?
and that was Unanswered, which is the title track of the album, which has been released by Lucy Ward, Svavar Knuta and Aidan Towns, who are coming to the Witham to perform on Wednesday, November the 22nd. I continued my chat with Lucy Ward by asking her how things went when the three of them finally met up in person in Iceland earlier this year. Did you have the songs ready for when you went to Iceland or were they sort of part formed and ready to be sort of worked on or or, are we working Mm. from scratch when you got there? I think the way I'd describe it would be like they were the bones of songs. They were skeletons. So we had lyrics and we had chord progressions, but no arrangements really. Um, And uh, but all but one song that ended up on the album was written in that way in the two years leading up to his meeting. Um, But then, yeah, this one song actually uh, unanswered. So the song that the album was named after. Swarvar and Aidan had travelled across Iceland together to get to the studio and they'd um, been to this cafe and in this cafe there's an old phone so clearly disconnected, so clearly outmoded technology, you know, the sort of phone where it's not even dial up, you can just like press a button to ring Johan down the valley and that's like all it's got and yet somehow this phone still sometimes rings, but nobody's ever been brave enough to answer it. And they were recounting this story to me. And I was like, this is a song. This is a song. (laughs) So I just started like playing the guitar. And then the first line came as it, as it stands in the, in the, um, on the record, like that he's calling again from 1963. I never answer, but I think I know what he needs or something like that. I think that's how it goes. I should know. (laughs) Yeah, um, it's weird. Sometimes when you speak your lyrics, you can't uh, find them in your brain the same way as if you were singing them. But anyway, anyway, anyway. And uh, and Aiden just said, right, that is the song. Come with me. So we went off to the kitchen, wrote all the English lyrics. And then we said to Suavar, can you write us three Icelandic stories in Icelandic as to who might be on the other end of the line. Um, and that's uh so there are only two songs, uh, two songs on the whole album that feature the Icelandic language. So it's that one in Unanswered. And we also do a, um, an Icelandic poem that we've set to music. So it felt kind of nice to, um, not that it should be the bedrock of the record, but it, but that it should celebrate the place that it was um, recorded and also celebrate the fact that Suava writes in Icelandic regularly. So given, given, given how you've come together and the gestation of the album, how on earth are you managing to, uh, to, to, to rehearse together? So we've been doing a lot of practicing, a lot of talking about who's going to do what in the songs. And then in theory, we'll come together. And I'm quite excited about this bit, really, because, you know, when we were playing the songs in the studio, um, there was an urgency and the opportunity to just jam around something that is solid. Like we know what songs we have to play, right? It's going to be quite nice. And when we were out in Iceland, we did do one mini showcase and we played a couple of the new tunes. And this is the bit I'm most excited about in terms of coming back on tour and uh, and kind of welcoming audiences I haven't seen for years to come and see this new trio. Is that because they're solo artists too, it doesn't matter if I was there or not in the sense that they're skilled at holding an audience alone, just just as I am, because that's what we do. That's our bread and butter. So standing up there with with people who can do that is an incredibly safe experience for me as an artist to just know that the banter can happen and somebody will be able to catch and they'll catch with something funny and engaging and then we'll play the songs. And all of that happened with, you know, like, no rehearsal essentially and only just having met each other in person so I think that these months of being able to kind of uh, take the songs in ourselves is I just feel like people are going to come and laugh a lot with us and you know cry because of course the songs are miserable because it is folk music (laughs) but like we're going to have the gamut of emotions and we're going to leave as friends and I just I'm so excited to be able to share that with um, my audience and new people who come to find us afresh. Will you each play some of your own music as well as the the music that you've played together they've made together yeah that's the plan um so suave has done a couple of dates in the uk before but um but essentially for both of them this is their first introduction to uk audiences and they're both tremendous songwriters so it just felt like 
it would be a trick missed um, to not do that. Um, now, we probably will jump in on each other's songs because we like them. And part of that global music match process actually was to um, like sing each other's songs and put them out on YouTube and stuff. So we have a little bit of a, uh, um, a back catalogue of collaborations to draw upon. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be really nice uh, to kind of get those breaks as well I think in the gig to have all these trio songs and then someone stand there and just do what they do you know because there is something about I think it's the reason we've all been solo artists for so long really there's something about a person standing there just themselves and delivering a story isn't there and it it would be a shame to lose that in among everything else well it sounds like we're in for a, a, a rare treat when you arrive at the Witham on Wednesday November the 22nd so we look forward to seeing you Lucy Ward thank you very much Oh, I can't wait to be there. Thanks so much for chatting, Stuart. Take care. And tickets for the gig by Ward, Knuta and Towns are available now. Call the box office on 01833 637 140 or go online to www.thewitham.org.uk. Hi, this is Stacey from The CAF and you're listening to In The Spotlight, The Withams podcast. Now, Jane's just wandered into the studio, so it must be time for a look at what's coming up at the Witham, both in the next few days and a little further ahead. And we start with news of a gig from John Bowden and the Remnant Kings. Jane, do tell me more. Well, John Bowden um, used to have a band called Bellowhead. Oh, right. Ah, yes. Now a vague... Yes. Rings yes. a bell. That's all I can say. Yes. So, in 2009, he founded the Remnant Kings. Mm-hmm. And then Bellowhead got going. And then the Remnant Kings were kind of relaunched in 2017. Ah, that makes sense because I'm going to, well, when we finish the uh, podcast this week, we're going to play out with a track from their 2019 album. So that all fits in. It all fits in, yes. So the Remnant Kings features Bellowhead bandmate Sam Sweeney, who has been to the Withers. He's been, yes. I'm before. just going to say we've had him before. Yeah. Leverett's Rob Harburn, Ben Nichols from King of the South Seas and new members Sally Hawkins and M.G. Bolter. So um, it's ambitious, genre-busting folk. It's very good, actually. That's what it's described as. No, it it is, actually, because when I played it on, I thought, oh, more folk music, and sometimes, you know, you know what I mean. And I thought, oh, this is rather good. Yeah. You'll see what I mean when I play the track in a minute. Yeah. So it's they're coming next year, Wednesday, the 25th of September. All right, so we've got a bit of a wait. A bit of a wait, but tickets are on sale now and it is expected to be very popular and a sellout. So I would get them sooner rather than later. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. So now that's that. That's a bit further ahead. What have we got in the next week? We have film, Stuart. We do. One that I think you have seen. I have. When I was on my my annual R&R on board the boat, the canal boat, um, the Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry, uh, we did. We took that with us, mm-hmm. and it's rather good. Good. It's sort of similar sort of themes, I think, as um, you remember when we showed The Last Bus? Yes. With Timothy Spall? Yes. Similar sort of thing. It involves a long journey and a sort of things happen on the journey, that type of thing. Yeah. Very good. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Can recommend it. Good. So it stars Jim Broadbent. And Penelope Wilton. She's brilliant. In fact, Penelope Wilton is very good. She's one of these unsung stars that Mm. any film she's in, um, uh, she just raises it a level. She's really, really good. Yeah. And it's based on the best-selling novel by Rachel Joyce. Surely good. When's it on? It is on Thursday, the 26th of October at 7 o'clock, and we will be showing it with subtitles. Very important. People do like the subtitles. They do, yes. I'm of an age now where I watch an awful lot of telly with subtitles. Uh, yes, well I do as well. But... Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just me then. It isn't just you. No, it's it's useful for all sorts of reasons. Then on Saturday we've got something which really, you'll, I'll not be within a mile of this. <laughs> I don't know about you. Well I'm actually, I'm actually working on the bar, Stuart. Ah, well, so... <laughs> you'll be busy. I'll be very busy, yes. This is ABBA Sensation, so ABBA Tribute Band. Oh, Mamma Mia, here we go again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not my cup of tea, but I, I mean, I, can, I, I know why they're very, very popular. They I are. took my dear wife down to London to see the Mamma Mia show when it first came out all them years ago. So Yeah, well, why aren't you bringing her to the Witham on Saturday then? Well... <laughs> No excuses, Stuart. I've got time off. For I good, want to I've got st- time off for good behaviour. That's why not. I want to see you dancing. You know, to Dancing Queen. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I'll be in, anyway, in a darkened room somewhere. Abba Sensation are returning to the Witham, and they are considered to be one of the best ever tribute, Abba Tribute acts. Absolutely. And we've sold loads of tickets for this one. There's a few left, so if you want some, get them bought now. Yes. Saturday, 28th of October. Excellent. Uh, we should just as well mention there was uh, due to be a classical performance on Sunday. Yes, Aquarius Quartet. Unfortunately, that's postponed, but they have assured us they will be back in the spring. Right. So anybody who's got tickets, I'm sure we've tried to contact everybody. Yeah. Um, but uh, just in case you hadn't heard, no Aquarius Quartet on Sunday. But for those events that are going ahead, where can we get tickets? By calling the box office. On? 01833. 631107 and online www.thewitham.org.uk Till next time. See you later. Cheers. Bye. bye. And that's just about it for this week's show. From all of us here at The Witham, thanks ever so much for listening and we hope to see you in the audience sometime soon. As promised, I'm going to leave you with a track from John Bowden and the Remnant Kings. This is called All Hang Down and I'll say cheerio. Lightning in the trees, thunder rolling by Feel the righteous tremble, hear the curtain cry And we'll all hang down behind The kinkers in the boots, the kinkers in the wheel The kings come to bed, the priests come to steal And the monks went to the sun
Thanks for listening to In the Spotlight from The Witham, Barnard Castle's Community Arts Centre. Available on all major podcast platforms. So please give us a follow and leave a comment or listen online at www.thewitham.org.uk. We'll be back soon with another episode.